Slick Roads will have team coverage to keep you out of the ditch. And a Callaway County fire leaves four kids without a father. How one woman says she will make sure they do not go without a Christmas celebration. Plus a big tree with a bigger problem. What's putting this Boone County landmark in danger? KOMU 8 News at 6 starts now. From Studio 8A, coverage you can count on in high definition. This is KOMU 8 News at 6. Will rain turn to snow, and how cold will it get? Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Reek. And I'm Bryn Whitaker. Let's send it straight over to Kenton for a look at what winter weather to expect the rest of tonight and into the weekend. Thanks, Bryn and Jim. Now, right now, all of our uh, viewing area is in a uh, winter weather advisory. This does last until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. That is thanks to a lot of the snow that we are going to be seeing here in the next 12 hours. Looking at our satellite and radar, we can see all of this starting to move right into our area. Some of it's starting to turn into snow now as a lot of us are seeing a bit of a mix here, especially right along that I-70 mark as you can really see where that's starting to change over. Our visibility is a little low as well, only five miles in Columbia is how far you can see. Three in Brunswick, only one mile in Moberly. I think that's thanks to a lot of snow that they are seeing right now at this hour. So visibility is also an issue, not only the road conditions themselves. Temperatures around 33 here in Columbia, 32 in Moberly, 34 in Brunswick. Now this is the air temperature. Our ground temperature is actually a little colder, right around 31 degrees. So again, Again, a little bit of a layer of ice over the ground right now as well. 10, uh, 10 miles an hour right now is our current wind here in Columbia, 6 over in Kirksville. I'll have a look at your entire forecast coming up in just a little bit. And those conditions are spreading all over our viewing area tonight. We have team coverage from across Bend, Missouri. Cami Waits' Nick Jabaria spent the day with a MoDOT worker as he plowed the roads. But first, we start with KOMU Waits' Alyssa Caruso, who is live in Columbia with an update on road conditions right now. I'm standing right off of Stadium Boulevard, and as you can tell, the rain is really starting to slow down here and turn into snow. But drivers told me that while it was just raining earlier today, that that, that, that didn't mean that roads were were not a problem. Many drivers said the rain caused some delays in their traveling because of traffic moving slower than usual. Some drivers told me their employers let them take half days to avoid possible snow and ice this evening. Uh, they're starting to get a little bit slippery on the back roads by my house. They were, it was already starting to stick. They're a little bit less traveled, so there's obviously a lot more slippier than these ones are. They've been decent so far, but I mean, just wet, people driving slow, cautious. Columbia Public Works told me that the evening crews are already on the roads and there will be continuous operations for the next 24 hours. Reporting live in Columbia, Alyssa Caruso, KOMU 8 News. Our team coverage continues. KOMU 8's Nick Chiberia rode with a plow driver today. He joins us live with details how MoDOT is getting ready for the evening. Nick. MoDOT says crews have been out since about 6.30 this morning salting. And as you can take a look behind me, traffic is still moving fairly well. That's as the rain and freezing rain has stopped for the moment. But with temperatures continuing to drop and conditions worsening, it appears that uh, plow operators will have a long night ahead of them. The chance of winter weather means work around the clock for these road warriors. Truck can't hardly push it. MoDOT worker Jason Lackman's job starts long before the first flakes fall. Making sure all our equipment's up and running. 15 trucks, that's how many MoDOT has to cover Cole County. When counting on every truck, things can get more difficult. You get a truck or two broke down that you can't get parts for or something for a couple days. That kind of puts you in a bind to you. As for navigating the trucks on streets crowded with holiday drivers. The main thing is just, you know, slow down, be careful. Um, you know, we're out there trying to make the road safe for them. So. Blackman and other drivers turn 12 hour shifts on days like these to keep up with whatever is coming down. I can tell you the roads were very slick today as I was covering the story earlier. My car hit a patch of ice on 63 and spun out. Take a look up at a picture of that scene. Now I was able to get out fairly quickly and I'm okay. But if you do have to go out, please be sure to drive extra slow and be extra careful. Reporting live in Columbia, winter is here. Nick Chiberia, KMU 8 News. 
And do not forget that the Columbia City Council amended an ordin ordinance earlier this year, making first and second priority snow routes no parking zones. Workers hung signs last week to alert residents that tow trucks will remove their cars if more than two inches of snow is on the ground. The city changed the policy after difficult ties plowing those routes because of parked cars. Investigators said today they're looking at a piece of human bone found near the Missouri River. The Division of Drug and Crime Control is working with the Montgomery County and Gasconade County Sheriff's Departments on the investigation. A Sergeant Eric Edson refused to give any information about the bone or the investigation. Hours after a fire killed a father and destroyed a family home, a community is pitching in to help. Kill Me Wait's Lauren Bale shows us what local organizations are doing in, in to help a family in need heavy flames showing from the roof and through the interior, probably 90% of the interior. In just 30 minutes, Walker family members lost their father and their home. Now one woman is doing everything she can to help out. It was devastating. Um, I really think that, uh, especially this time of the year, to have to go through something like that is uh, one of the hardest things to have to go through. Rourke works with Serve's Adopt-A-Family program and is working to get the Walker family gifts. But the family needs more than gifts this year, so the organization is accepting everything from basic necessities to monetary donations for the family. This weather mimics the mood here at what is clearly a devastating scene. I spoke with the family and they say the community's support does mean a lot to them. And while the community can't bring back what the family has lost, it can try to bring back Christmas. We are going to try very hard and, and we will make it happen um, to give them Christmas this year. Lauren Bale, KMU8 News, Callaway County. You can make donations to serve to serve Incorporated, the organization Rourke works for. For more information on how you can help, visit our website, KOMU.com. The president of a Seattle area labor union said today rank and file members will not take a final vote on a best and final proposal for Boeing. Missouri is watching closely because it's one of more than a dozen states currently competing to build all or part of the new Boeing 777X plane. Last night we learned negotiations broke down between members of the Seattle Union and Boeing. Union leaders do not think the newest contract offer differs much from the one members rejected in a mid-November vote. Missouri state government and St. Louis County government are offering billions of dollars worth of incentives to Boeing to build in Missouri. The major disagreement in Seattle is over the definition of pensions and benefits. Hey everyone, welcome back to KMU8 News at 6. Here's a live look over the Columbia Regional Airport. Can't see too much out there, but it's definitely raining out there right now. Not quite snow yet in Columbia, but not too long. And we're going to be seeing that snow start to move through the area. Back in the studio, though, we do have a uh, winter weather advisory going throughout all of our viewing area here, as you can see in all of this blue. That is going until tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. That just means that we can see about two to four inches of snow by that time. And again, all right, thank you very much. Let's send it over to Brandon. One of Boone County's most beloved landmarks, more than three centuries old, is on a road to or near a road to trouble. Cammie Waits' Caroline Hecker branched out and visited the big tree in McBain to look at why some people are barking about the tree's future. But you still have massive limbs that weigh tons. You can't miss it. At more than 350 years old, the big tree stands 90 feet tall and is a staple of mid-Missouri. In the past few years, the tree has been steadily declining in health. Kenny Bassett has lived near the tree since 1968. He drives by the tree every week and is disturbed by what he sees. On one side, you overburden the trunk onto the other side. The big tree has survived record levels of water and heat. I think they've lived a life as little kids. Yeah, sitting up here in the... the floods of 93 and 95 put the tree underwater for weeks, but it survived. And then less than two decades later, the drought of 2012 again put the tree's life out on a limb. But it's not Mother Nature, rather man, that's posed the biggest problem. That that paved road has blocked the water and the nutrients to one side of the tree, and which in my experience in excavation for all of the years I've been in it, adversely affects the limbs on the same side of the tree. Boone County Public Works says the asphalt road was laid in 1999 and replaced a gravel road. Since the replacement, Bassett says the side of the tree over the road is slowly dying because the root system is trapped under the asphalt. Toxic runoff from road chemicals is also hurting. Now the distance between the asphalt road and the base of the tree is about three and a half feet. 
The county says the gravel road and the asphalt road were the same distance. But Bassett told me that's not right. He said you used to be able to park a car between the two. But some say the asphalt road isn't the tree's problem. The majority of the root system on that tree that's absorbing water and nutrients is nowhere near that pavement. It's, it's out in the middle of the fields. Despite the disagreement, all sides have come together to help the tree's health. That's included health treatments this fall. But for now, the root of the decline remains a mystery. Caroline Hecker, KOMU 8 News, McBain. The tree received national attention in 2012 after the owner was forced to artificially water the burr oak tree after it started showing lethal signs of distress. We'll be right back after this break. And it's time for your Mizzou super fan of the day. Here is four-year-old Kemper Gilbo. As you can see from the pictures, Kemper has grown up proudly wearing black and gold. His mother, Courtney, says Kemper went to his first tailgate when he was just nine months old. If you want to be our super fan of the day, email share it at KOMU.com or share via Instagram or tweet at KOMU News with hashtag superfan. Fashion has certainly changed over the years, but is it appropriate for news anchors and reporters to show their sense of style? In this week's Your View, we take a look at fashion and how it affects how you get the news. KOMU 8 news anchors and reporters can choose what they wear on TV, but some viewers say clothing and jewelry can be distracting and anchors should stick to wearing something more traditional. One viewer wrote KOMU and said, please quit putting those ugly, big, clunky necklaces on the people doing the news. They take your eye away from the news information. I find myself ignoring the information and staring at the ugly jewelry. KOMU 8 news anchor Brittany Peeper says she can understand these kind of comments. I do see where they're coming from and where it could be distracting. And it is something that we should think about when we're getting dressed to go on air is that while we do, you know, want to look nice, that we also want the main point of our job is to get information across. And if what we're wearing is hindering that in any way, then we need to rethink that. While some viewers aren't fans of showing personal style, others think it adds to the newscast. I want to compliment Rosie Newberry on her professionalism and style as she reports the weather on KOMU each day. She dresses terrific with hair and makeup to match. As a viewer, it's noticed, and along with the job she does and the image she reflects. MU Associate Professor Greeley Kyle agrees too much style can be distracting. I have a problem personally as a, as a journalism educator with large necklaces or dangling earrings or, or um, startling hairstyles. While they're very acceptable in public, uh, you'll see them everywhere, I think they're distracting. So what do you think? Does what an anchor or reporter wear affect how you focus on the news? Let us know on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Then watch Friday night at 6 as we report your view of the news. Siding liquidation. $2 million worth of siding must be sold by December the 31st. Save 40%. Call now. You may think you're getting a good price on travel from another airport, but Columbia Regional Airport offers the best total trip value. Compare and see for yourself at flymidmo.com. Should have flown from Columbia Regional Airport. Columbia Regional Airport. My job requires a lot of travel, and I would notice how bad my legs would hurt. I was surprised at my young age to learn that I did have a medical reason for the discomfort and pain that I experienced every day. Dr. Ryan helped me understand through ultrasound that I had a circulation problem. If you have any leg symptoms, feel tired, or run down, call for a free vein screening. My insurance carrier covered the procedures. I went back to work the same day and I feel great. I have a lot more energy and I'm able to keep up with my lifestyle. You may think you're getting a good price on travel from another airport, but Columbia Regional Airport offers the best total trip value. Compare and see for yourself at flymidmo.com. Should have flown from Columbia Regional Airport. Columbia Regional Airport. When you see news happening, take a photo or video and send it to komu.com by clicking on the U News tab. I need the ultimate gift for my wife. I'll spend whatever I have to. How about the Samsung Galaxy S4? It's free when you buy a holiday bundle, plus it's backed by a great network. Wow, free and good all in one. This will be a first. <laughs> it's you. It's for after. <clears throat> yeah. It's Sparky. He's back.
She'll love it. <laughs> this season, pick up the Samsung Galaxy S4 free with the purchase of a holiday bundle from U.S. Cellular. U.S. Cellular. Hello, better. Discover candy for all occasions at the Candy Factory, Columbia's candy maker. Now, from the Ford Sports Desk, KOMU 8 Sports. Good evening, everyone. The men's basketball team has started the season out strong. They're undefeated at 9-0 with wins over a ranked UCLA squad and wins over other power conference opponents like Northwestern and West Virginia. But despite all that, this team is still very much in flux. There are just a couple veterans returning from last year's team and a few freshmen and transfers from last year to work into the fold. The Missouri Tigers still have some tough games on the slate before they open conference play. There's still the bragging rights game against Illinois and a trip to Raleigh to take on North Carolina State. But first, the Tigers must turn their attention to the Western Michigan Broncos and on themselves as they continue to sort out their roles. We're still trying to tinker with some things rotational-wise and timing when we rotate guys, and that, 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 that may vary from game to game, game to game, based on fouls and whatnot. But I think guys understand what they can give us to help us win, to be successful, and that's the bottom line. Right now, it's a blessing to be on the floor and playing the minutes I've been playing, but I know I still got a lot of things to prove on for on the offense and defense end. I just came in here, man, just trying to uh, be solid. Uh, do what the team asked me to do. So, I mean, coaches put me in a position to, do, to make plays, and I feel like I'm doing that right now and, and just keep getting my teammates involved. Now, one area Coach Gary Pinkle has had a lot of success in is recruiting football players from the state of Texas. In fact, 35 of Mizzou's football players are from the Lone Star State, including Henry Josie, James Franklin, and Michael Sam. Well, those guys get the added bonus of going home when they play in the Cotton Bowl in January. The players get back to work for the Cotton Bowl next week, and they're all looking forward to it, especially knowing their friends and family will be right there to support them. A lot of guys are from Dallas and the Houston area, so it's good for us to get back and see our families. We haven't seen them in a long time, and we don't go to Texas anymore, so it's a, it's a great blessing for us. We're pretty excited. And hopefully we have a lot of people that are supporting me, and I know I have a lot of friends and family there, so hopefully they'll be able to make it. It means a lot. It's a memory, you know, and when you think about it, you know, at the end of the day, you know, some stuff fade away, but the memories you get to uh, take with you forever, and definitely that's going to be a memory for me and my family. Defensive end Michael Sam adds to his award count. Sam has been named a first-team All-American. Sam was tied for 10th in the nation with 10 and a half sacks. He led the SEC in that category. Also, the Kansas City Royals signed infielder Omar Infante to a four-year deal worth about $30 million. That's all from Sports News. We'll be back after the break. Hey everyone, welcome back. Looking at our satellite and radar image here, you can see I-70 is really the line between snow and rain, with snow mostly above I-70 and rain mostly below I-70. You can see the Sedalia area also is getting a lot of heavy precipitation right now. We're there, and they're also getting in between the mix between the snow and rain as it starts to change over with our temperatures getting below freezing here. 33 in Columbia right now, 35 in Jeff City, 34 in Mexico, and tonight we are...